Previously on Madness in the Mountains. There's been a new development in this case, so I need to get to the mainland as fast as possible. We decided to figure out what had weakened the chains and detected the presence of a chemical agent. I've decided I cannot allow you to interfere with this case. I need your help. I'll take the case, Luke. Stop pretending that everything was fine back in the day, that we all loved Luke. So it's not my fault, right? This is a bit of a touchy subject for Cranky. Are there any other quarries that might have feared for their jobs? You'd want to talk to the China Clay Pits. This whole affair with you and Luke is all your fault. I told you that neither Sodor nor Victor pressed charges. I, I don't want to hear it, Thomas. Hmm. <sighs> Thomas, what have you done? I've ruined it all. The case, my friends. It wasn't Victor, was it? No, I should have known it wasn't, but instead I just shouted at Victor, and in turn lost the respect of any engine who works at this quarry. About that, Thomas, I need to talk to you about something. Oh no, not you too, Luke. Look, I appreciate what you've done for me, all the detective work, but frankly, I think you're making the situation worse. I look guilty as ever, and you just look plain mean. I think it's best for the both of us if you stop working on this case for me. I don't want any part in your investigation. Are you firing me, Luke? I mean, it's just... No, I, I get it. It makes sense. I'm no detective. I'm sorry, Thomas. So am I, Luke. Wait, don't go just yet. Freddy, what is it? I heard about your, let's just say, bold accusation back over there. Quite the fallout, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Freddy. Hey, don't get angry at me. I'm just trying to help. I don't see how. Look, Thomas, I'm not like the other quarry engines who point the finger of blame at the shouting engine. i found that most things aren't always surface level. But they're right, aren't they? I shouldn't have shouted like that. Oh, absolutely. Definitely shouldn't have done that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you have good ideas, Thomas. For instance, your theory about Victor was not outlandish, despite being incorrect. But... But you went about it the wrong way. Instead of trying to find evidence, you decided to harshly accuse the suspect. And that's what needs to change. Your method. What does that mean? You know, I was just like you back in the day. Stubborn, arrogant. I thought that I could get away with anything. Fearless Freddy, they called me. I guess I let it go to my head. But eventually, after making my fair share of mistakes, I realized that in the real world, I need to be careful. I can still be fearless Freddy, but more importantly, I need to be smart Freddy. <laughs> Here's the thing, Thomas. I don't think you should give this case up. You're full of bright ideas, and I'm sure eventually you'll find out who the mastermind behind this heinous crime is. But in order to be a good detective, you need to be careful about how you proceed with that information, how you interrogate, how to gather information without losing friends. Therein lies your mistake. I think I get it now. Glad to hear it. But I'm not sure how to continue with this case. I'm just about out of leads. What about the China Clay Pits, Thomas? I heard you talking with Luke about them earlier. Mighty Mac? Were you eavesdropping on us this whole time? Uh, no, of course not. That would be suspicious. Which we aren't. Aren't suspicious, he means. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, there you go. The China Clay Pits. That seems like a good place to resume the investigation. I suppose they're right. I'll pay a visit to them tomorrow morning. Good. Just remember, go in as their friend, someone who wants to help them. You'll be surprised how much more they'll be willing to tell you. 
And don't lose your cool either, no matter what. I won't, Freddy. Thank you. You're welcome, Thomas. Good night. So this is the China Clay Pits. Indeed, Thomas. Timothy, it's good to see you, man. Likewise, it's been a while. So, how are things holding up around here? Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Business is picking up. Working here has become a lot more eventful. Oh, eventful how? There were a lot more buyers of our clay. The market's really opened up. We're exporting our products to places all over the world. That's great to hear. Yes, the clay pits have faced some tough times. Almost went out of business due to the insane competition in the industry. But we pushed through, and now look at us. True that, Marion. But we don't talk about those darker times, do we now? Oh, no, sir. Hmm. Nice seeing you here, Thomas. We don't get a lot of visitors. Thank you, Marion. So, it's just you two working here? Oh no, we have help. Are you sure you want to call the twins help, Timothy? The twins? <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Marion! Oh no! Marion, are you okay? I'm fine, Thomas. Ugh. Bill and Ben, what is the matter with you two? Can't you guys stay out of trouble, especially when a guest is here? Oops. Sorry, Timothy. Hee hee hee. Thomas, welcome to the China Clay Pits. Hello, Bill and Ben. Fancy seeing you here, Thomas. Odd, isn't it, Ben? Certainly is, Bill. That was a nasty accident you caused back there. Yes, the twins Bill and Ben have a penchant for pulling pranks. I'm not surprised, but this was something else. Are their pranks usually this violent? How often do they pull these pranks? Oh, now I know what this is about. You've come here to investigate the Victor and Luke reopened case. And you think we're the ones who pushed Victor into the water? Why? Is it just because we like to pull pranks? We had nothing to do with the accident, Thomas. You're just being judgy. We thought you were above that. You're right. I am just trying to figure out who's behind this crime. But here's the thing. I need to hear everyone's perspective of the case if I want to make an accurate assumption. So I'm asking, as a friend, for you to come forward with any information you may have about the matter. Oh yeah? Well, we don't have any. Why do you even think it's us, anyway? You had mentioned that you were struggling to keep up with the competition from other quarries back in the day. Was the Blue Mountain Quarry one of them? Um... You see, Thomas, th the thing is, we never feared for our jobs. Certainly not from the Blue Mountain Quarry of all places. I mean- Timothy, maybe it's time we tell Thomas the truth about what really went down. Are you sure that's a good idea, Marion? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to trust that Thomas understands what we mean. Can I do that, Thomas? Certainly, Marion. I just want to see if I can help you. Huh. All right. The truth is, the Blue Mountain Quarry was a powerhouse compared to us. We just couldn't match their output. There was a point in time where things felt hopeless, as if we were just waiting for the day our manager would tell us to find a new job. Things were bad back then. We needed some way to bounce back into business. Well, how did you? We worked stronger and harder. We maximized our output and efficiency until soon we joined the Blue Mountain Quarry as powerhouses in our industry. We finally had job security once again. But I'm going to cautiously tell you this, Thomas, and I hope you take this the right way. While I never wanted the Victor and Luke incident to happen, it undeniably helped our chances of rising back up. The Blue Mountain Quarry didn't have any extra help from Luke. And now they have a shadow of suspicion cast over them with the reinvestigation. That's why business is booming for us right now. 
But of course, we never meant for any of this to happen. I mean, it might seem that we're capable of causing all this, but you understand that this is all coincidental, right? Uh, I understand. Well, the chance of such a coincidence is slim. I'm going to take your word for this. For now, at least. We appreciate that, Thomas. Thank you. We may not be the most civilized engines on the island, but we're not out to hurt anyone. I see. I'll let you know if anything in the case changes. Meanwhile, I have to head to the docks to follow up a lead. Good on you, Thomas. See you around. Right. Also, you might want to pick up Marion off the floor. <laughs> Will do, Thomas. Will do. Hello, Dockside Engines! Morning, Thomas. Look who decided to show up to work today. <laughs> hey, Thomas. Oh, you're here, Porter. But why are you here, Thomas? I'm just here to continue my investigation of the Victor and Lou case, Cranky. It's okay. Hmm. Continue? You weren't around when I swung by here yesterday. I just had a couple of questions I wanted to ask Salty and Cranky. Well, got any questions for me? Now that I'm here. <laughs> well, no. You weren't around for the incident. Although I am curious. Salty had mentioned yesterday that you already had a maintenance check recently. Why did you need a second one? <sighs> I told Cranky this earlier, and he told Salty, so I guess I'll tell you now. I didn't have a second maintenance check. I didn't go to the Steamworks like I said I did. Then where did you go? To find a place to sleep. Thomas, you don't understand. The trip back from the Sodor Line Company was long and difficult, and I was too tired to actually get back to work. So I ran away. You know how it is. Salty keeps telling me I need to work harder. Yeah, I have heard that one before. I just wanted to make sure you weren't involved in any of this Victor and Luke trouble, now that the case has been reopened. Oh, certainly not. Except, the problem is, you're one of the only few open ends I had left. Now that that's gone, I don't know how to continue. Ooh, I take your investigation is not going too well. Not really. I have two major parties that I think could be involved in the accident, but I bet I'm one of those parties. Right, Thomas? Actually, no. I never thought it was your fault, Tranky. You need to get that idea out of your head. Your involvement was purely accidental. Are you sure about that, Thomas? What do you mean, Cranky? I mean, it was dark and stormy. I couldn't see a thing, and everything I tried to pick up felt slippery. That's not your fault, Cranky. Let me finish, Thomas. Of all the things I recall from that day, there's one thing I remember in particular. And what's that? I was in a bad mood. Angry, scared that two new engines were coming to our railway. Victor and Luke, I mean, they were strangers at the time. I didn't want them here. Cranky, what did you do? I took my fear out on them. I picked up Luke and bashed him into Victor, causing him to fall into the sea. So, all this time... Yes, Salty, I did it. I'm responsible for the Victor and Luke incident. It can't be. I'm sorry, guys. I don't care what happens to me. I just needed to tell someone. I can't keep holding on to this guilt forever. I think we need to call the Fat Controller immediately. Well, that was bizarre. Yeah, I never thought that Cranky would be behind this. Neither did I. At least he confessed to the crime. Yeah... I just can't believe it. I mean, the crane that I've known for years is now being questioned by Sir Topham Hatt and the authorities for such an indecent crime. I mean, sure, Cranky's at a gruff side, but I never expected him to resort to violence. Well, maybe he had something else going on in his life, Thomas. But now, since he came forward on his own, his punishment should be less severe. And thankfully, this whole reinvestigation is over. I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? None of this makes sense. I mean, Cranky's motive? Extremely weak and out of character. And what about the chemical agent that was used to weaken the chains? 
You're telling me Cranky managed to slip that in there when the ship first came? Maybe, Thomas. I mean, you heard him. He was angry. Even so, Victor claimed his chain snapped mid-voyage. There's no way Cranky could have applied the chemicals when the ship was halfway across the ocean. That is odd. But Thomas, I don't like the outcome any more than you do, but Cranky confessed. He is responsible. Why would he do that if he wasn't? I don't know, but there are still many open ends left at the Blue Mountain Quarry and China Clay Pits. I need to figure out what all of that means. Figure out? Thomas, you need a break. You more or less solved this case. It's over. Focus on making amends with your friends. So you heard about that. Sure did, Thomas. And I can promise you, that's what's important right now. I'll apologize to Victor and Luke later, but for now, I need to figure out who the real person behind all of this is. That's how I can make it up to them. Isn't that what landed you in that mess in the first place, though? No. Now I've learned what it means to be a true detective now. I need to speak with the people on board the ship that night. Maybe they'll know something about what actually happened. You're going to speak with the Sodor Line Company? On the mainland? It's the next best place I can think of to get information. I'm not going to jump to conclusions this time. Uh, Alright, Thomas. I trust you. Thanks, Salty. Wish me luck. Oh, good luck, me hearty. Been looking for you. Mr. Miller, right? Yes, never thought I'd be face to face with the one and only Thomas the Tank Engine. Certainly wasn't expecting you over here. Neither was I. But I have a couple questions for you, sir. A surgery Engine wants to ask the Soda Line Company questions. I wonder what this could be about. I need to know more about the ship that Victor and Luke were on that night. I think I can help you with that. Oh, and I almost forgot. Let me introduce you to Captain Williamson. He was the head of the ship Victor and Luke were traversing on. He'll have the answers to all of your questions. Pleasure to meet you, Thomas. Likewise. If you don't mind, Captain Williamson, a first-person source of information could be crucial to this case. I need your insight. I'll do my best to help you, Thomas. I too want this investigation over to get my ship back up and running again. And the way I've seen Sodor handling the case, well, <laughs> let's just say they need all the help they can get. Exactly. Is there anything odd you noticed in the day surrounding the incident uh, about the ship? Well, aside from the actual accident, nothing radically out of the ordinary. Wait, let me think. There is something. I don't know how relevant it is, though. At this point, nothing is irrelevant. In that case, let me tell you. The ship had a really nice hot cocoa machine. Like, really nice. I remember the crew sitting around one of the furnaces sipping some... Mm, that was some good cocoa. I stand corrected. Okay, wait, wait, wait. There's another thing. The ship had some additional cargo besides the engines it was transporting. Mostly cleaning supplies, you know, wipes and disinfectant solutions. Well, we took inventory after the accident, and it turns out one vial of cleaning solution was missing. I figured in all the commotion, it could have easily slipped away, so I didn't report it as anything unusual. I don't see a reason for anyone stealing it. Well, where was it being kept? Below deck. I distinctly remember that ship having some extra space underneath the main deck. That's where they were kept. Only members of the crew have access to that space, though. How about an engine? I mean, an engine would fit in that space, but I don't remember any engines on the ship besides Victor and Luke, and as passengers, they certainly do not have access to the below deck area. Okay then, what about the crew? Do you think they might have stolen the cleaning solution and somehow used it to do... something worse? No, I trusted that crew with my life. Still do. They're some of my closest friends. They wouldn't dare do something like that. Besides, what could they have done with a bottle of disinfectant solution? Nothing, I guess. Precisely. Well, this went nowhere. Sorry I couldn't be of more help, Thomas. No, you did everything you could have, Captain Williamson. And I'm grateful. Just, do you think I could see the closed-down ship in person, in case there's anything noteworthy? 
No, Thomas, the Soda Line Company has indulged your detective games for too long. It's time you- Come on, Miller. Let's give the tank engine a chance. He's been patient with us so far. Ugh, fine. Take him to the ship for viewing only. No one is actually allowed on the boat. Understood, Thomas? Understood. Thank you. Let's go, Thomas. All right, you heard him. You're only allowed to inspect the ship, Thomas. That'll be fine, thank you. Say, on the deck of the ship, do you see that gritty substance over there? Sure. Not sure what's so special about dirt, though. It's not dirt. It looks refined, processed almost, and it looks like it was applied recently. Okay... Hang on, Mr. Miller said no one was allowed on board the ship since the accident. How was anyone able to put this on? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm in charge of patrolling this area to make sure no one gets on, but I guess one of those harbor engines that work here could have sneaked on board. I wouldn't have noticed. What do you mean by those harbor engines? You know, the type that usually work here. All the same color and design. Assist ships on voyages. Nobody really pays attention to what they do. It's usually just maintenance and such. I guess that's why they put the dirt there. Hmm. Do you think one of these so-called harbor engines could have been on Victor and Luke's ship that night? And that nobody remembered seeing them because nobody pays attention to them? I guess. It would explain a lot. It explains everything. I need Mr. Miller to meet me at the Sodor Steamworks at sundown today. I think I've solved the case. Are you sure about this, Thomas? Mr. Miller doesn't like to have his time wasted. I'll double check my evidence, but I've got a good feeling this time around. All right, Thomas. I'll let him know. Thank you, Captain. Say, speaking of double checking, you never told me. What do you actually call those engines you spoke of earlier? Oh, I'll tell you. Thomas, when you asked if the Steamworks was free at this hour, I assumed you wanted to apologize for your insolent behavior yesterday. I didn't realize you wanted to gather up all your little suspects to play detective. I do want to apologize, Victor, but give me a chance to say something. Why should I? Every time you open your mouth, you seem to hurt someone. Why is it any different now? Sir Topham Hat, can you allow this? Thomas spoke to me earlier about his theory. And while I can't excuse his disobedience to my orders, this time he seems to have a well-backed-up point. Ah, oh, fine then. What have you been waiting to tell us, Thomas? It's time for the madness in the mountains to come to an end. It already has come to an end, Thomas. Cranky was the one who weakened the chains and knocked Victor over. It would appear that way at first, but I believe we must look a little closer. And to do that, I'm going to need Victor's help. Really? Oh, that's can't be good to say this time. Well, what makes you think I want to help you? Victor, I'm sorry for everything I said earlier. I didn't have the right mindset at the time. But for what it's worth, I've changed. I want to solve this mystery, but I want to do it right. I want you to actually want to help me. And if I don't, then I'll respect that. But I do believe that deep down, you want to. You want closure. Anybody would. I do. I'll help you. But doubt me again, and I will never forgive you. Deal. Alright, Thomas. What questions do you have for me? I'd like to know if on your journey to Sotol, if you noticed anything strange happen around you. There's only one thing I can think of. And what's that? Well, at some point during the voyage, a mysterious person came up behind me, late at night, and moved me forward on the track, just a little bit. At the time, I thought it was my driver, so I didn't say anything. But now looking back, I'm not so sure. My driver told me that on that night, he stayed in the crew's cabin, sipping hot cocoa for some reason. If that's true, then I have no clue who snuck up behind me. Well, shockingly, I can confirm your driver's alibi. As for the mystery person who moved you forward, we'll get to that later. For now, can you tell me, Victor, about how long ago this incident was before your chains actually snapped? Uh, let me think. About, uh... About a week? Yeah. How'd you know that? 
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you how the crime was committed. The ship you were on, Victor, was carrying an assortment of cleaning supplies. Well, the ship's officer, Captain Williamson, told me that a vial of cleaning solution was missing after the voyage. So, I did some digging, and I discovered that most cleaning products contain a chemical compound called hydrochloric acid. This acid is highly reactive with metal and can cause it to corrode over time. And by over time, you mean about a week? Yes, and I propose that this is the same chemical compound the mainland officials found on the chains of the ship. It caused the metal to weaken until it was so brittle it snapped when a small wave passed through. Does that sound about right to you, Victor? Yes, it does. In that case, the chemical needed to be applied a week before the chain snapped, and the chain snapped midway through the journey at sea. Thus, there is no way Cranky could have committed the crime. He is not the real culprit. Then why did he confess, Thomas? Because he knew who it really was. Then why don't we ask him, huh? Save us another lengthy explanation. I doubt he'd tell you. See, Cranky is more compassionate than one might realize. Is that so? Yes. Look around, you guys. Each one of you has a motive for committing the crime. The engines from the Blue Mountain Quarry, scared of Luke working on Sodor. All the clay pits engines, wanting to tarnish their rival's reputation. Cranky knew something, and tried to keep it from coming out. He was trying to protect you guys. Well, it could be anyone, then. Not anyone. Remember, they had to have been on the ship before the voyage even started, and they needed access to the lower deck to steal the solution. And after examining those parameters, where does that leave us? It leaves us with the final clue given to us by Captain Williamson. It also needed to be an engine that could do their job unnoticed by others. They could move around the ship without causing suspicion. That's why no one claims to have seen a third engine aboard the boat. I asked Captain Williamson if there were any such engines, and he told me something very interesting. He said there are, and that they work near harbors and accompany large ships on voyages. But more interestingly, do you know what he called them? I simply call them... Porter, Porter engines. Oh, you can't be serious. Me? Just because I share the same name as the culprit? You've got to admit, Porter, it does look pretty bad. Sure it does, but do you even have a motive? Why would I want Victor in the sea? You didn't. The whole thing was a small mistake on your part, compounded by the fact that you choose not to face any consequences for your actions. What does that even mean? I'm lazy? Sure, we've already established that. I'll tell you. You see, I found a dirt-like substance on board the ship earlier today. Now, I know what it is. Sand. That's what this whole mystery has been about. Salty, you explained to me that sand is to prevent engines from slipping and having nasty accidents. That's right, me, RT. All right, then. Pretend with me for a moment as I give my best guess as to what happened that night. Whatever your guess is, it's wrong. I wasn't there that night. Sir Topham had hadn't bought me to work on Sodor yet. I never said you were working on Sodor, Porter. Before your time here, I proposed that you worked as a Porter engine on foreign railways. Furthermore, I proposed that you were the Porter engine, the assistant to Victor and Luke's ship that night. And as part of your job, you were supposed to apply sand to the base of the ship to prevent any accidents. But you were lazy and didn't put any sand for Victor's side of the ship. That meant that as soon as a crane even tried to lift Victor up without the chains, the slightest thing would have sent Victor crashing into the sea. That's preposterous. He was doomed from the start, but you only realized that midway through the voyage. And at that point, you and your driver realized that your careers were all over. If the events played out like that, people would immediately fault the lack of sand, and you'd be out of a job. Or worse, scrapped. Can you believe this guy? No, you're right. You're just guessing as to what happened. You're making up a story. Then allow me to conclude it. You knew you had to take the attention away from yourself, so you began to form a plan. Your driver snuck up behind Victor, got into his engine, and moved him forward on the track a little bit, just enough so that when it came time to unload Luke, he would knock Victor into the sea. That's who Victor spotted in the middle of the night. That would make sense. And as for the hydrochloric acid porter, your driver stole that from below deck. 
You guys were technically crew members and had access to the cargo. You stole a vial of cleaning solution and poured it over Victor's chains at the same time you moved Victor, just to add another element of confusion to the case. Now when the entire Sudrian dock saw Luke knock Victor into the sea, nobody would suspect the sand. They'd blame it on Luke. That's what happened. Everyone thought it was me, so I hid away. Of course, with an investigation pending, Porter, you had to put the sand back on at some point after. But amongst all the confusion involving Victor's accident, you couldn't do it then, so you ran and hid below deck. Nobody noticed the wee little Porter engine. Haha, <laughs> are you finished? Cause that's one long outlandish story you got there. Just, I beg your pardon, you said it yourself. There are hundreds of Porter engines, most of which are identical to me. Just how do you know that I'm the one that accompanied Victor and Luke on their voyage? Well, thanks to the reinvestigation, of course. See, although we didn't initially, we eventually found the hydrochloric acid poured on the chains, prompting the reinvestigation. And at that moment, you knew you were in trouble. You still hadn't reapplied sand on the ship from that night. It was too chaotic. As detectives would soon investigate the ship itself, you thought that blame would be pointed back towards you due to the lack of sand. So once the Topham Hat said two days ago, So I need to get to the mainland as fast as possible. Would one of you engines be kind enough to take me there? You were the first engine to volunteer for the job, worried that your past had come to light. But taking this job meant you had all the opportunity, whilst the Topham Hat was talking to Mr. Miller, to reapply the sand to the ship. You snuck up behind Captain Williamson. He didn't notice you. He just thought you were another porter engine. After all, you all look the same. Ouch. And don't worry, I saw the sand when I went to look at the ship today, and ironically, that's what led me to you. It made me think, how would sand from all those years ago still be here today, if the ship truly had been closed off? It's because you jumped to conclusions, fearing for your job, and reapplied the sand, forcing me to a very peculiar coincidence of timing. And I don't believe in coincidences, Porter. Well, it could be, right? It still could be any Porter engine in the world. You can't tie me to this crime now, can you? I think we can. That's where Cranky comes into the mix. Cranky? What does he know? Like I said before, he knows everything. See, a few days before this all began, you had a maintenance check in which your sandboxes were filled to the brim with sand, but you used them without anybody's knowledge when you reapplied the sand to the ship. And you had to explain that, so early the next morning you went to refill your sandboxes again, only this time Cranky saw you. Um, Porter, where are you going? Oh, um, a uh, maintenance check. Now you felt comfortable telling him you were going for a maintenance check, because Cranky didn't know about your first one, and you thought that was that. But when I came to the docks later that day, Saucy revealed to Cranky that you had already had one previously. Besides, he just had a maintenance check a couple of days ago. So Cranky's gears begun turning. Why on earth had Porter gone for two maintenance checks? You told me that you were actually just lazy, but in this case, I don't buy it. So he confronted you about it, and you told him everything about why you went back to the steamworks for a second time. Cranky, please, you can't tell anyone about this. My life will be ruined. Uh, I won't, Porter, but Thomas has been asking around. He'll be back soon. What will you say if he tries to talk to you about this maintenance check business? I'll tell him I was being lazy, that I lied to you about it. All right, just lay me out of that bit. But Cranky couldn't stay out of it. When I returned to the docks today, he saw I was getting too close to the truth. And when he thought you were about to crack, Porter, he took a bullet for you by confessing it was him. I did it. I'm responsible for the Victor and Luke incident. Well, too bad Cranky isn't here to verify that I had two maintenance checks, and nobody else can! It's true, Thomas. The Steamworks issues these checks, and I remember giving Porter only one. Right, so I call my last witness to the stand, Kevin the Crane. Oh please, what useful information will Kevin provide? Victor left the steamworks to work at the Blue Mountain Quarry, after Porter already had one maintenance check, so when he came in for a second one, it was actually Kevin that worked on him. 
Can you confirm this, Kevin? Yeah, I gave him a maintenance check. He particularly mentioned that he needed his sandboxes refilled. And that, Porter, proves that it was indeed you who reapplied the sand on the ship, after forgetting to for Victor that fateful night. His accident is your fault. It's weak. The jury won't buy it. Maybe not, Porter. We could drag it through the courts, and who knows, maybe you might win. But Thomas met with me before the summation happened, and we found documentation of all the Porter engines on every voyage ever taken, and we can use that to connect you to this very specific crime. And that's something the jury will eat up. Or, we're giving you a choice, Porter. If you confess right now, then with Victor's approval, we can absolve you of your crimes, and can sentence you to hours of community service, which will be difficult, but no doubt simpler than the potential jail sentence you might face. I'll forgive you, Porter, but you need to stop this right now. The choice is yours, Porter. Maybe it's time to end the lies. Fine. I confess. Everything you said is true. It's all my fault. I'm sorry, everyone, for lying to you all. I was just so scared. You have to believe me. I do, Porter, and I'm glad you confessed. You did the right thing. I know, it's... it's just hard. And it will get harder. But that's what all good things require. Hard work. You'll see that soon enough, Porter. Salty, escort Porter to the docks, where he will begin working twice his usual jobs. That seems a fair punishment for now, at least. Will do, sir. I never thought I'd say this, but your detective skills actually work, Thomas. Thank you for that. I forgive you for what you said about me earlier, Thomas. It seems as though you've learned your lesson. Thank you, Victor. Same here, Thomas. I doubted you then, hence I fired you. <laughs> but now I know you're above the amateur detective level, Thomas. Thank you for saving me from my false accusations, Thomas. No problem, Luke. Like I said, it's what friends are for. Well, Blue Mountain Gang, best get back to the quarry, then. You're right, Luke. Goodbye, Thomas. Sorry we ever doubted you. You know that summation thing you did there, Thomas? It's pretty cool. Thanks, Duncan. I appreciate you not throwing us under the bus, Thomas. Yeah, that was nice of you. Goodbye, now. Well, that explanation was exhausting, though I gotta hand it to you. Your law enforcement team is better than I thought. We know the culprit now, so as per our deal... Yes, Mr. Miller, you can reopen your ship. I give my consent. Thank you, Topham. Goodbye now. Thomas the Tank Engine. With that, I think we can say case closed. Finally, what happens to Cranky now? Oh, he likely won't face any consequences. Apart from being a nuisance to law enforcement, he's done nothing wrong. It's really you that I don't want gallivanting off without my permission anymore, no matter how impressive your sleuthing skills really are. Of course, sir. I'm sorry about that. As you should be. But I suppose we never would have outed the culprit had you not played detective again, or had we not pulled our little stunt. What stunt? You know how we gave Porter a choice? How we convinced him not to take it to a jury because of the documentation we had? Yeah. <laughs> I lied about that. Thomas and I had nothing. <laughs> what? That's so sly. Well, it got him to do the right thing. And I'm all for that. Jumping to conclusions, though, seems to get the best of us all sometimes. I couldn't agree more. Keep up that work, Porter. And what are you doing sitting in a siding all day? I don't remember me complaining this much when you lazed off. Yeah, I guess you're right. Ah!
Ouch. Second chances, am I right? Oh boy.